Hi, I'm David. Today on 3D Make It, I'm going to show you the best plugin for Octoprint Astroprint. Let's go. So as some of you know, and maybe some of us don't, Raspberry Pis are powerful microcomputers that can be used to control our 3D printers. One of the best ways to do this is using Octoprint. Octoprint is a control interface for your 3D printer that lets you upload files, monitor prints, and cancel them if you have to. To get Octoprint, it's quite simple. If we pop over to the Octoprint website here, we can see that there's a download button at the top. So that's octoprint.org and download. And then we can just grab the latest release. Now it tells us that Octoprint right now is compatible with the Raspberry Pi all the way to the 3B+. Plus. The image is not compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4, but there are test builds. So if you do get a new one, you could try one of the new test builds. Um, the instructions to install Octoprint are on the website. I'm going to be making a video on how to get it all set up and working properly. But for now, let's just go to the download page and say we've run through this setup. We've got the SD card in the Pi and it's on one of our printers. So the setup for your printer is pretty simple. You plug your USB cable into the Raspberry Pi and log into the local URL. So here we are at mine. Now I've just used the local IP address I've signed in already and I've got some add-ons going on here that if you don't have the stock install it's going to look a little different. I've changed the color of my top bar here but most notably I have my temperatures up in the top bar. I just like it. But one of the best most useful plugins I find with Octoprint besides the ability to upload G-code files over here and then print them directly and cancel if a job's going bad is Astroprint. So Astroprint, let's take a look at that for a second. Astroprint's website is astroprint.com. Now one thing that's interesting about Astroprint is it's also able to be installed on a Raspberry Pi so you can come to the website and you can click the downloads and then you can grab the Pi image and install it just like you would Octoprint, set it up. The setup's a little different and I'll go through both of them in a video upcoming, but Astroprint gives us a little more control and slicing and I'll show you in a second. So we're just gonna use Astroprint as an online client for now. So I'm gonna show you how to install the plugin for Astroprint on your Raspberry Pi. It's fairly straightforward. Once you have Octoprint installed, you grab the wrench and it will bring up your settings. And then you go down to Plugin Manager. Now from Plugin Manager, if you already have it installed, it will show up in this list here. Now if you don't have it installed, we have to go get it. So you can see here that I have mine installed uh, right here, Astroprint. But if you didn't, all you have to do is scroll down a bit and click the Get More button. You're going to type in Astroprint and then if it pops up, so I'll just show you with another one, it would say install beside it here. And so all you got to do is grab Astroprint and then hit install. So once that's installed, you have Astroprint on your Octoprint instance. So I like doing it this way because Octoprint gives us so much control over the printer. So if I grab my controls, I can move the machine head up and down. I can send G-code or view G-code. The terminal tell me, tells me what's going on. Um, I can even set up time lapses, which I use at the end of all our videos here. So time lapse is an add-on and all of these are add-ons. And you can see that there's quite a few that I have installed. And some like bed visualizer give you good data about how level your bed is if you're using ABL. So coming back to Astroprint, once you've got that installed for a first time setup, you're going to click here and it's going to ask us for an API key, which isn't a big deal. So just to show you how it goes, I'm going to go to my instance. I'm going to disconnect my Ender 3 and that's what we were working on. And then I'm going to go back and just refresh. And you can see here that this is what it looks like. Hi, welcome to Astroprint. Um, so first things you got to just pop in and you have to make yourself an account. If you don't have an account, it'll say sign up and you just run through the sign up. Once you have an account, 
we just need to grab the API key to link it up. So I'll go account settings and then I scroll down and then I just grab my API key and unfortunately it's blurred out for you, sorry. And then we come back into our uh, Ender 3 on our Octoprint and I just paste that API key in and I link to my Astroprint, I say yes and once it reloads it says you're logged in awesome and you can tell because if you click on the astro print tab now it loads all the projects and i'll show you those in a second so once we're logged in why use astro print well astro print lets you monitor your octo print away from home without actually having to open up firewall rules and it makes it more secure so if we log into our astro print panel this is what we see to start with so i'm just going to start with the monitor tab and you can see I have two printers and you're allowed two printers for free. Other than that, you have to pay and I think it's $10.99 a month for more, up to five, I do believe. So I'm just gonna enter my camera and control. So here I can grab a picture of the print and see what's going on. I can also uh, change temperatures. I can also launch the Octoprint instance. So if I go back into my Octoprint, we can see here that I have a little bit more control when it comes to temperature. I get a nicer graph, but AstroPrint is giving us that information on the bottom. Um, the only other difference is I get a live video, whereas from the website on AstroPrint, I don't. Um, if you run AstroPrint locally, so instead of installing OctoPrint, you install AstroPrint on the Raspberry Pi, you'll get video. Um, the one thing that is a little bit better, I, I would say, is the ability to stop and start prints um, from AstroPrint online. It makes it super easy. There's an app for Android and iOS. So we're all set up. We can see that we get some remote control. Now I just want to show you how simple and easy they've made this to use. So let's use an Ender 3 as an example. So we sign up for AstroPrint, we've logged into our OctoPrint, we've got our API key in, we just need to add the printer profiles now because our printers are here. We can see them in the monitor. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pop down and we're going to go to printer profiles. You just grab a new profile and then the cool part now is they've got profiles built in for printers and they're pulling these right from the manufacturer. I'm going to do an Ender 5. I don't have one, but I don't want to mix up my profiles right now. So I'm just going to add to my printers. And there's the Ender 5. If I click into it, we can see it pulls in all of the build information for us. All the start and stop G code. Everything that we'll need. If you needed to edit the start and stops, let's say you added uh, auto bed leveler. We can grab the edit button here. And then we can just come down and add whatever we need to G29. Uh, let's call ABL and then save and then that way next time we use that profile it will have the ABL right there all right so now that we have our printer profile when we've added more than one printer you can see there but we need to add a few more we need to add a material profile and a slicer profile so material profiles are fairly easy you can grab a material that you've already made or make a new one or use their default and PLA for default is 190 I believe and 60 on the bed but for our sake let's just go make a custom one and we're going to call it Ender 5 uh, PLA and we know that it's 1.75 millimeters we know that let's say we want our extruder to be 205 um, and the bed to be 60 and we hit create now I'm not going to hit create but um, if we look at my other profiles here, we can see that it just saves the material. So, so if I go back and I'm just going to click my CR10S 210, it just tells what temperature to print and the bed. Now that becomes useful because then we can quickly change our settings just like any other slicer. So now the last thing is our slicer settings. And the real cool part about this slicer is we can add a material profile to it so again i guess we're gonna have to make a pla for the ender which is fine 
Uh, we're going to go tool 5 and 60. There. And what will happen is when we make our profile now, so I'm just going to go back to slicer settings, and then I'm going to go add a new slicer profile and Ender 5. You can see here, so we're going to call this Ender 5 PLA. Uh, let's call it 0 0.2 resolution. This might look familiar now. We can use Kira slicer settings in the cloud. So all you have to do is go through Kira and grab all the settings you usually do. So for me, I'll put 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0.4 on the quality. My shell, I like to use 3. So I'll just put it up to 1.2 and that gets me uh, 3 walls. Um, infill, I go 10%. I always use cubic subdivision, but hey, use what you want to. Um, all of the custom default settings are fine for now. And if you have different settings in your Kira, by all means, you can enter them in. Material, it doesn't matter because it's going to pull the print settings from our material profile. So you can see here the default print temperature is at 210, but the printing temperature, because of that material we had to pick, is at 205 and 60 down there. Speed, I like to print my stuff around 80. I have Trinamics, so it makes it nice and quick and easy. Um, initial layer speed, you might want to bump all these up since you moved them up, up here. Uh, but again, just go into Kira and grab your settings and bring them over. It's not hard. So here's Kira, and here's our settings, and I need to click Custom. And then, yeah, here's all the settings. Layer height, we did that first shell, we did that next. Infill, so all of these just transfer right over. So I'm going to click Save just to save us some time here. And now, if I go back, I've actually set up the printer enough so that I can use it. Now, here's where it gets really cool. AstroPrint enables one-click printing. Since we're slicing and printing from the cloud, and I'm now hooked to my OctoPrint instance, I can go here to Thingiverse, or my mini factory, and let's say I want to pick um, a red dwarf figure, so Crichton. So I can grab, uh, let's say, this Crichton from Red Dwarf. And then what I can do, since there's three pieces here, I can add them with this add button. I can also print on demand. So if I wanted to just hit print right now and be done, it would start printing on whatever printer I told it to. So the first thing it would do is start slicing it. And then once it's done, it lets you print a, or pick a printer, I should say. So I'm gonna click add, and I'm gonna click add, and I'm gonna click add. So now we can see that all the check marks are grayed out because they've completed. So if I just go back to my uh, AstroPrint homepage now, and you can either click the waffles or the AstroPrint, it'll take you there. If I look at my design library, so the design library is up here, it actually pulled all those pieces in. Crichton, Crichton, Crichton. Now, I would hope that the modeler split it into three pieces so it can be printed easily, but let's take a peek. One of the newest features is this build plate beta. They let you actually add designs. So I'm just going to add uh, Crichton. And once that's complete, I'll add Crichton, the base, and then I'll add Crichton, the head. Now, uh, Greg from 3D Make It calls me Clicker McClickerson because I'm not patient. So that's why I ended up with two heads in the list. And you can just go into the design library and delete those. But you can see here that the build plate on the Ender 3 isn't quite big enough, perhaps. So let's just see what we can do about that. Um, we can move, we can scale, we can cut, we can rotate. So if I grab my body here and I just move it over and then let's uh, move it back and then I'm going to grab the head and then I'm going to move it back move it over and then you can see here that I can rotate scale and cut which is really cool you can actually cut on an object in a digital platform online now um, I can also go align to grid up here which should snap all the models on the build plate We'll see if it can do it, and there it goes. So you can see I can automatically bring all of them in. Um, I can spin around and look at the build plate, so I can see that I'm gonna need support regardless of what goes on, which is okay. 
we can actually uh, add support in in a minute. Um, but if I grab Crichton's head and I pick uh, lay flat, it will orientate it hopefully in a good way. So all these features are a mix of Kira with a little bit of object uh, editing. All right, so the AI chugged away and it, it decided that this is the best way to put it, to lay it flat. So that's okay. Now up here, we can see that we can pick our printer and then it would change the build plate size so an ender can't fit all these pieces. But if I pick one of my bigger printers, so a CR-10S, it definitely can fit on there. And I could align them again. It'll snap them. And just like Kira, it shows that gray border because it's going to be using a skirt to help adhere it to the plate. Um, other than that, I'm going to hit print. So once you uh, create a print, so we're just going to call it Crichton, uh, project, no project is fine. Um, if you had a lot of files that you needed to keep together, for example, when I printed the Darth Vader helmet, I could have used a project there. And then if I fire print, it'll create mesh, create shadows, away we go. And once it's finished rendering, it'll send the job. So after we hit print, we get to the rendered screen. So we can see here that it put the models on the build plate. It's going to use whatever print profile we tell it to. Um, material, uh, we can add a new one. I have 210. I like 210, so I'll print 210. So that's my PLA 21060. Um, I'm going to use my custom slicer. So that's my Kira 3.6 settings that we went through earlier. And then since this model does need support, I'm going to tick support. And you can see here it's going to add support in under here. I can change the slicer settings if I want to. But since we went through and set up those Kira 3.6 settings ahead of time, we're okay. If you needed to change them, hit advanced slice settings. And then it, what it'll do is bring up that settings window again. And you can just add some settings. So I can hit slice or I can hit print. Print sends it right to my printer. Slice will just slice it and save it. So if I hit print. It'll go through, it'll render the design, and then I can send it to my printer. Awesome. So it hit print. I rendered it. It's ready. If I hit print now, it warns me to make sure the bed's clear. But if I hit print now, it'll send to my CR10. So if I do hit print, which is fine, my CR10 is not on right now, but it can see it. So uh, right now it's unmatched because I use custom names when I name them, but that's okay. I'll just hit print. And then what will happen is it's sending the file to the CR10. So if I pop into my CR10 Octoprint instance, we'll let that load and this is going to slice. So it's just uploading the file now to the printer via the uh, plugin that we installed. Once it's installed, I can hit monitor and then it brings me right to the printer. It says it's heating up. That's a lie. It's off. I promise. Um, I can grab a picture. We can see that the build plate is almost empty. I've got my prime line here. Um, but if I just go in here and look, it sent Crichton to the printer. It's going to try to heat up. I can even see in the terminal that it's trying. But what's going to happen is it's going to trip thermal runaway in a second because there's no power. So no power means it can't heat, so it's just going to shut off. So I'm going to hit cancel. Um, but if, you're, if your printer was on, you could send the job. So popping back into AstroPrint, if you go into the design library after you've sliced everything, if you're, you can see now I have this new Crichton STL up here and I actually have a print file so it says print right away. If I don't have a print file it doesn't show any of the options over here so if I hit print it's going to go through that slicing setup again. So Astro Print can one click print from Thingiverse, my mini factory, 3D Print Cloud, Leo Poly, and 3D Slash. So as long as you have accounts on those websites you can launch them, sign into them, and now you can have full access to Thingiverse. You can search by Thingiverse ID. So if you have that ID tag from Thingiverse, it's faster sometimes. But if you wanted to search a dragon, 
it'll pop up Dragon and away you go. So now we've set up most of the panel on AstroPrint and we can use it to monitor and send one click print jobs to our OctoPrint. Uh, it's quite robust. It's well worth running the two because you get more plugins and add-ins with OctoPrint that you'll ever get in AstroPrint. So you get more control with the local panel on OctoPrint. But when you're away from home or if there's somebody that's just getting into 3D printing that really wants to make a, an easy experience and a one-click go, it's very, very easy to come to AstroPrint, set up that account, and install the API key and the plugin on OctoPrint and your one-click printing. So there you have it. AstroPrint is the best plugin for OctoPrint. It gives you remote control without having to open your network. It lets you one-click print. And best of all, it's easy and free. OctoPrint lets you get under the hood and add all these plugins to it and gives you more control locally. You guys have been awesome, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when new videos are coming out. You guys are great. Have a good one.